all right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is vlog day. And yeah, I got a vlog all ready to go, all planned out for you guys. I'm going to do that thing right now where I put all the timestamps down here at the bottom of the screen so you can see what's included, what's coming up, what might be missing. And yes, you'll probably notice that beer is still missing. And I promise, I, I, I'm giving you my word here, for all of the beer segment fans, there is going to be a solution to this. I just haven't implemented it yet. I'm going to try my best maybe next week. Maybe it will be implemented next week and I can let you all in on my master plan. And it's not even really like a master plan. It's not even really like that good of an idea. It's just a workaround that I think might actually work. For those that are very dedicated, like very loyal to the beer segment, you will have a place to watch the beer segment because damn it, I miss the beer segment so much. I'm going to try to tackle that next week. Anyway, welcome. Welcome to the vlog. Um, before we get too far into this vlog, I do want to do that thing that is my new favorite thing to do where I hear from one of my subscribers. So right now, I would like to hear from Justin. What's up, Nick? And happy Friday to you. I really wanted to go to ECC today and stop by and say what's up, but I am active duty Navy and I have duty tomorrow. So I was kind of unable to make it just because of the time crunch. But with that being said, I just want to stop by and say thank you for everything you have done for me as a vapor. Just a huge inspiration, man. Um, I'm a father of four, been active duty Navy for nine years. I haven't smoked in four or five years and it's just been a great experience. And uh, this industry has just done so much for me, man. You, of course, your all your videos from the vlog days, the Tuesday Bro Tuesdays, and all the reviews you've done the past four years have just helped push me along my vaping path. And uh, now I admin over at Squid Vapor Group, just doing a whole bunch of cool things for people. It's awesome. And uh, it all started off, actually, four years ago, I was on the John Paul Jones, uh, a little Navy destroyer, and I had just picked up a Vicious Ant Kraken Genesis atomizer. You know, that Addy where you had the stainless steel mesh that she had to roll and put in through the top. It was a pain in the ass. But your video actually helped me and inspired me to keep going trying out new stuff and pushing others, man, to quit smoking and uh, to keep on vaping. And although we can't vape on Navy ships now, I do vape at home. Nothing but good times, man. And once again, thank you for everything. And uh, like you always say, let's keep on vaping. Gotta love that double barrel. Yeah, absolutely. Justin, awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for the kind words. A, thank you for your service. Uh, active duty Navy, crazy. That's crazy. And it's crazy to me that you can't vape on Navy ships. I remember this is something we talked about in the news uh, a while ago. I feel like this was years ago when the Navy decided that you couldn't vape on, uh, you know, on ships or battleships, which seems like just a huge bummer to me, but I'm, I'm glad you're, you're, you're dealing with it. I'm glad you're okay with it. I'm glad you just vape like a champion at home, Justin. And honestly, thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Also, very sorry that you couldn't get to ECC. This is an older video. I've got a lot of older videos that are just kind of piling up that we're going through now. Sorry you couldn't get to ECC, but there is another ECC coming up in August. And Justin, I mean, come on. Crisp high fives and hugs all around. Let's make it happen. So shout out to you, Justin. Uh, shout out to your kids. Shout out to the Navy. And I do, I absolutely do remember that vicious ant Kraken. It was a real hypey Genesis tank back in the day. And I I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't stand it. I don't like, I didn't like any of the Genesis tanks. I didn't have a very good vape experience with any of them, especially using stainless steel mesh as a wick. I think out of all of the, all of the fads and all of the ideas and sort of innovation that's happened in the vaping industry, I think using stainless steel mesh as a wick was one of our worst ideas just Ever. It's it was the worst, Justin. It was the worst. So thank you so much, Justin. And if anybody else has any videos similar to that that they would like to see featured on this here vlog program, you can send them on over. Whether you want to shout out where you work or your shops or your family or just tell your vaping story, I'd love to hear it. You can send them on over to Nick at grimgreen.com. Just 
I'll see it. I'll see the attachment. You can mark it like that one thing, that favorite thing. It doesn't matter. I'll see the attachment and they all get watched and downloaded. I have so many videos sitting on my hard drive right now from subscribers and we're going to get through them, but I could always use some more. You know what? I like being surprised and I like seeing funny stuff and I like seeing silly stuff and I like hearing, most of all, I really like hearing uh, good vaping stories, like vaping testimonials, so to speak. Like, how did you start vaping? When you know, how long did you smoke for? Were you a pack a day smoker for X amount of years? When did you discover vaping? What was your first device? Things like that. I, I find that very, very, very interesting. Justin, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the video. And what I want to do right now is just real quickly go over some of the things that I have been vaping. First things first, still hanging in there with that USV, that updated USV Arc Mod. It's just fantastic. I really like it. And I also really like the very unfortunately named Fat Baby Subohm Tank. It is a mesh based, you know, mesh coil head based tank. It's, it's real nice. It's just... <laughs> It's just named the Baby Beast, or not the Baby Beast, the Fat Baby. Baby Beast, Fat Baby, Fat Baby Beast, what the hell? The Fat Baby. This is filled up with a uh, Yig, which is beautiful in a sub -ohm tank. Yig just tastes delicious in a sub -ohm tank. And I have been using the same juice with the same coil head through this 60 mil bottle of Yig, and I'm almost down to the end of it. So I'm gonna try to put all 60 mils of juice through this coil head and then, you know, see what the coil head looks like at the end. This coil head shows no signs of slowing down at all. I'm still getting really good flavor and I'm still getting pretty stellar performance. This is a 0.15 at 62 watts. Banging. Yeah, it's good. It feels like a brand new fresh coil head, which is unbelievable to me. Also still heavily rocking that As Vape Gabriel mod. I can't explain it. I can't justify it. I just like the way it looks and I like the way it feels. It is topped with that Saver RTA from Mr. Vaping Bic. That Vaping Bic? Nope, that's not it. Vaping Vic out of the UK. Saver RTA. I'm still using it as a restricted lung hit. It is still filled up with Skull and Crossbones from Vigilante Juice Co. And it is now topped with a very cool, uh, this is the mini Duo, I believe, I'm not 100% sure. I might have to do some Google food, but this is a drip tip from DHD that just fits in here perfectly. And it's got that gold, uh, you know, stay gold acrylic at the top. And I just, I just really like this. Flavor flavor. I generally always have a Mac RDA combo kind of going. It's kind of my preferred way to vape. So I like to keep one or two around Mac RDA glass dripper bottle combos. And this is my newest one that I set up that I'm kind of really loving. This is that uh, Vaporizzo ME1 mod topped with the Twisted Messes 24 Pro Series and then a DHD gold nub tip on top. Stay gold nub tip. And I even got a matchy 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 blue bottle to match the blue of the atomizer. These are those bottles that I ordered on Amazon that I transfer my juice into when I'm gonna be using it with a mech mod just because, you know, running the risk of repeating myself. I love the mech mod glass bottle combo. It's just a really great system, I guess. Really great way to vape. I believe this is Smacks Lick It on the inside. I took a little bit of a break from Pony on Acid. As much as I love that juice, I felt like it, I was just vaping way too much of it. I was just, it was too much Pony on Acid constantly, nonstop. In fact, right now, I could probably vape some Pony on Acid and be completely satisfied by it. But I felt like I wanted to take a little bit of a break from it. So when you go back to it, when you go back to that juice that you just really love, it just it just tastes so much better. Right? Anyway, this is uh, just tastes so much better. And I'm, I just I'm just stumbling over my words, and that's fine. This is Smacks Lick It Peach Cream, freaking delicious. Uh, I think this battery is uh, on the verge of death right now. Definitely. This battery is definitely on the verge of death. I'm going to see how much charge is left in this. Really? That's shocking. My little charger over there told me that that battery was only at 60%. And I thought, wow, oh, that doesn't make any sense. I thought for sure. I thought for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, it would be at like 10 
12%. Like it felt that weak. Interesting. Maybe this is a uh, interesting. I find that interesting. Well, let's put a new battery in here and see how it goes. Yeah, already instantly better. Anyway, another mech combo that has come back into rotation because of the review I did earlier this week. Broadside, Culverin, Juice, everywhere. Oh, careless. Just being careless with Juice. Oh, this is no good. I'm gonna have to get some uh, water involved in this. All right, hang on. Uh, occasionally when the juice situation gets out of control and there's just a little bit too much juice to just maybe clean up with a little bit of a towel I have to go through the whole process of like I wash my hands and I take my mod into the bathroom and I just give it you know a little bit of a bath just a little bit of water a little you know you just you just stroke it a little bit like this I guess give it a little bit of a rinse off a little bit of a towel dry off and then now it's juice free and it's good to go and uh, now I don't remember where I was Colvera and broadside I've loaded it up with Kilo uh, Moo series the banana milk this used to be Moo e-liquids banana milk and now it's part of the Kilo Moo series anyway it's a juice that I had it seems like forever ago and I absolutely loved it. It's just a creamy, creamy banana cream flavor that is just delicious. Love it. I love this broadside Colvarin combo. It's just so good. Second to lastly, still hanging in there with that uh, Fu Ryan from Lost Vape, still annoyed by the big carbon fiber battery tube on the back. I am really enjoying this mod. It, it hits real nice. It's a fully mechanical mod. I do like the big juice bottle on the inside. A lot of people in the comments were telling me, oh, well, you know, this mod has a, a 10 mil bottle of juice and this mod has a 12 mil bottle of juice. And I go, okay, well, that's great. That I'm not reviewing those, I'm reviewing this one, which has a nine mil capacity, which I think is pretty great. Still loaded up with Pink Paradise, still topped with that Recoil Rebel Gunmetal and the uh, Frosted Dock Tip that, this is just great, great combo. So apart from my Kilo, I do always like to have some sort of mouth to lung, maybe a few mouth to lung setups. And so speaking on the Kilo real fast, the Kilo, Kilo 1K is like a, a staple. I love it. I love the mouth to lung on this. I blew through a whole bunch of those nutty pods. The nutty flavor is my favorite of the Kilo. And then I got a nutty pod that about halfway through, it really started gurgling like crazy, just gurgling and then juice in my mouth. So I'd pull the pod out and it was just covered in juice and I'd be angry and I'd wipe it off and I'd like flick it out and then I'd vape it for a little bit and it would just get gurgly and slurpy and I'd get juice in my mouth again and I thought well I've been through like I don't know 10 kilo pods already I guess one having one like you know a uh, bunk one DOA right out of the gate is you know that that's not too bad like one out of 10 pods I feel like that's a little bit on the acceptable side so then I got out a tobacco menthol pod first tobacco menthol pod same thing, just leak nation right out of the gate. And when you have leaky menthol juice and you're getting minty menthol juice in and around your mouth, it's not a very, uh, I don't know, comfortable experience, I guess. So I threw that pod away, got another tobacco menthol pod, and it lasted straight to the end. I was able to vape it completely dry with no leaking, no nothing, no gurgling whatsoever. Then, here, this is a long story and I'm sorry, but then, for those keeping track, that's 10 out of one nutty pods, two tobacco menthols, one of which was bad, and now add a third tobacco menthol to that that was gurgly and leaky about halfway through the pod. So I feel like I'm doing some pod science here with these Kilo 1K pods. Right now, this is a fresh strawberry pod in here. No issues, just wonderful, wonderful vape experience. No leaking, no gurgling so far. But, you know, as always, I'll keep you updated. If this one starts leaking and gurgling, might have to take another look at the Kilo 1K and see is this really like my go to pod system if I'm running into so many leaky pods in a row? and it's good. Strawberry is good. And I love having other mouth to lungs around. That's why I've got that Hass Tour mini tank still hanging in there. Even though it does get gurgly, it's, it's easy to clean the gurgle out and it never gets in my mouth. That's something that really bothers me about, I mean, 
vaping in general, any vaping experience where you get juice in your mouth, I go, nope, that's that's not the vape for me. This one does get a lot of condensation up in that little drip tip area. And when you're taking a drag, it does tend to get a little bit gurgly, but I never get juice in my mouth. And as soon as I take off the drip tip and kind of wipe that area out, it goes back to being a perfectly smooth, crispy, crispy mouth to lung vape. This is 18 milligram uh, Cardamator Crush 50-50 uh, PGVG. It's just what I like for mouth to lung. It is a 0.4 ohm coil sitting at a whopping 18 watts. Good. Oh, good and satisfying. This Hass Tour Mini is just retro. It reminds me of the old school days of vaping. It just reminds me of a simpler time, like back in 2009, 2010, when every state and local government wasn't breathing down our necks, when there weren't building size billboards, anti-vaping billboards in California, when the FDA wasn't trying to eliminate flavors and they weren't trying to ban flavors in San Francisco and New York. That's what this reminds me of. But yeah, that's basically uh, what I've been vaping. That's been my go-to. Nope, there's another. There's another that's in the living room. Yeah, yeah. this is the TAC 21 that I opened up last week. I've been using it almost non-stop since. That's why it was in the living room. And it is topped with that brand new, that new, new Wake Mod Co. RDA. I don't know if they're calling it the Wake RDA. I don't know if they're calling it the Littlefoot RDA. I've seen it on Instagram, people calling it both. People calling it, oh, it's the Littlefoot RDA. Other people are saying it's the Wake RDA. Whatever it is, it's the Wake RDA. It's the Littlefoot RDA. It's loaded up with Mango Lassie from the MXR collection. I believe this is a relative relatively new juice vendor and this mango let me tell you and these new chubby gorilla bottles as well the new chubby gorilla bottles still leak just not as bad they dialed it down just a little bit they dialed down the leaky the leaky level just a little bit and this mango juice from the mxr collection mango lassie is delicious but it tastes i mean it's a mango it tastes like so many other mangoes that I've had. It kind of tastes like that mango sticky rice that I used to really love from Craft uh, Vapory. It tastes a lot like that mango from Fresh E-Juice that I used to really like as well. It's a mango and it's uh, and it's a mango and it tastes like a mango. I put some uh, M-Turk Aliens in here. Uh, they came out to a 0.1, 0 0.1 on the nose and I've been running it at about 100 watts, which with two, uh, you know, 2,700 batteries in here, it's not bad. I mean, you get still get a pretty rocking battery life, even at 100 watts with those bigger batteries. Still going to spend a lot of time with both of these, obviously, before they get a full review. Uh, if I had to do a first impressions right now, I would say, no, I don't want to do a first impressions right now. I will say that the Wake RDA in the airflow configuration that I have it in right now, not full open, closed down just a little bit, like a quarter of the way, airflow is banging, real smooth, nice airflow. So yeah, now that is everything that I have been vaping. So what we're gonna do right now is, uh, yeah, we're gonna stay right here. We don't move around anymore. We used to move around a lot. Back when I was experimenting with a lot of like different shots and different camera angles and being real creative in my old, you know, in my old apartment, in my old office, we used to move around a lot. Now that I'm up here in LA and I have this great office and I found this great camera angle, I'm like, nope, this is, we are good right here. So anyway, what we're gonna do is stay right here at the desk. It's time for some news and advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. Okay, so I feel like the first thing we gotta talk about is all the flavor bans going on. I was waiting as long as I could to hear the results of the San Francisco flavor ban. San Francisco was voting on Tuesday to, you know, to ban flavors basically in the entire city. Not use or possession of, sales of of, which is a huge, I mean, an unbelievable bummer for the vape shops in, in San Francisco. They, they're fucked. Like, 
if this passes, if Prop E passes in San Francisco, they're just fucked because people can leave San Francisco. They can drive over to Pleasanton. They can drive over to San Jose. They can drive somewhere else to get their flavored liquids where it's not banned. And as far as the vapors in San Francisco go, you can still order everything normally online. The only thing that this bill is fucking over is the brick and mortar shops, the retail locations within the city of San Francisco. Francisco, they are going to be up shit creek without a paddle. Hey there, everybody. Sorry to uh, butt into my own vlog like this, but I just wanted to give a quick update on the San Francisco flavor ban. Yes, it, it unfortunately passed in the city of San Francisco, which means that now any sales of any flavored vapor products are completely illegal in the city of San Francisco. I don't know if it starts right away. I'm not sure when the law takes effect, but it will take effect. This was Proposition E, and this was a public vote. This wasn't like a uh, health committee uh, meeting where uh, a few politicians voted on it. This is the public voting on it. It passed with 68% of the votes in favor of the flavor ban and 31% uh, against the flavor ban. And I truly do believe that the voters of San Francisco were in incredibly misled by the city. This was framed as a anti-tobacco, you know, uh, proposition. Proposition E was framed as, you know, no tobacco flavors anymore. Tobacco flavors are attracting kids and no more tobacco flavors. Not even menthol anymore in San Francisco. It's illegal to sell uh, menthol cigarettes under Proposition E in San Francisco, which is unbelievable to me. All the voters of San Francisco accomplished in this was uh, uh, getting more people to smoke because more people will definitely smoke now and shutting down a lot of uh, businesses, uh, local businesses in San Francisco. Just doing uh, a little bit of Google Foo research on the internet. There are about 20 to 25 shops from what I can tell in San Francisco. And if these shops remain open, they will only be able to sell hardware. They won't be able to sell uh, any liquid. The liquid that they do sell uh, has to be I don't know, unflavored, I guess, or tobacco flavored, I guess, which kind of brings up the point what constitutes a tobacco flavor. I mean, something like an RY4 is definitely a tobacco flavor, but it does have caramel components to it, vanilla components to it, as well as tobacco components to it, which even, I mean, which even bringing that up, the idea that tobacco has other flavors inside of it, as far as vapor liquids go, kind of shows me that the city of San Francisco doesn't really have any idea what's going on. I think the voters of San Francisco were incredibly misled as to what they were voting for. And like I said er earlier, just now, I think in the vlog was this, again, only affects the brick and mortar retail locations. They are the ones who are getting fucked over here. Vapors in San Francisco can still drive out of the city to get flavored e-liquids. They can still order them online for the time being. This is a huge blow to the vaping community. This is something that I think is going to start spreading, unfortunately, throughout the United States. It's happening in San Francisco. It's happening in San Mateo. It's happening in New York City. Sorry, not New York City. New York State as well. Vilifying vaping and limiting adult access to life-saving vapor products is a humongous disservice to public health, and it's really unfortunate what happened in uh, what happened in San Francisco this week. It's always very uh, disheartening when, when things like this happen. It feels like a, a major blow to the vapor, you know, to the vapor community, to the vapor industry. It's hard to remain uh, optimistic or positive uh, in times like this when, when things like this are, are happening in the United States. And I honestly think all that we can do is regroup, try to stay positive and continue fighting for this life-saving industry. We need to get uh, politicians to look at science. We need to get the public on our side. It's never been an easy process. It's always been an uphill battle since the very beginning, since back in 2010 when I first recorded a video about how we needed to stop the California e-cig ban. There are only six days left before the SB 400 bill that will ban electronic cigarette sales in California goes into effect. Six days, they're gonna ban electronic cigarettes in California. How is everybody not outraged at this? We're gonna send emails, please veto Senate Bill 400. I'm gonna put a link in the description and there's a simple cut and paste that says, 
please ban Senate Bill 400. It's designed to ban electronic cigarettes, which are, according to all preliminary studies performed by the Food and Drug Administration, a safer alternative to tobacco cigarettes. Placing a ban on them will force many users to go back to regular cigarettes at the expense of their health, their loved one's health, and the health of those around them. Rather than banning them at the request of big tobacco, we should embrace them, regulate them, and help forward their acceptance for positive health benefits signed your name. Anybody who watches this video, please, please, if you live in California, if you don't live in California, support our fellow vapors in California who are gonna about to have the ban hammer dropped on them. I can only do so much, you know, Chris and Sean can only do so much. We need everybody's help. So please, please follow the link. Send an email to the governor. There's phone numbers to the governor's office that, again, I'm going to post over here. Don't sit here hoping someone else, else will make this go away. Let's make them hear our voices. This has to stop. Um, it has to. We have to make some noise. We have to sign this. We have to send emails. This is ridiculous that they're trying to take this away from, from our fellow vapors in California. It's just been an uphill battle ever since, and it's uh, it's culminating. Things are happening. There's a lot of moving parts to this. All we can do is just, you know, keep fighting, keep vaping, uh, and keep, uh, keep defending our right to not smoke cigarettes. So with that update said, um, let's get back to the vlog. And in addition to that, San Mateo County is also going to vote on a flavor ban this week. It was one of those introduce vote on it just right away. Like, he here's the bill. We're going to vote on it. Here, we here it is. So San Mateo County is doing that as well as New York. The, the original flavor ban bill did get voted on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this directly from CASA because there's two bills now in New York that are both flavor ban bills. The second one was introduced a few days after the first one, and it's already heading to vote within the next few days. They are really I mean, intensely going after flavors in New York City. And I'm just going to read this right here from CASA. It says, during Thursday's Senate Health Committee meeting, members voted 14 to 1 in favor of moving a flavor ban along in the legislative process. So the first one that was voted on 14 to 1 is just moving along through the process. It's not a law yet. And I said this on Twitter. It's not a law yet, so don't give up hope. Rebellions are built on hope. There is still a very strong chance that this can be uh, that this can be defeated. But let me continue reading here. Voted 14 to 1 in favor of moving the flavor ban along in the legislative process, considering that the bill's sponsor, Senator Camp Hannon, Democrat New York, S06, is the chairman of the committee. A yes vote is arguably a matter of procedure. There was no debate and a bare minimum of discussion before the vote was taken. S8610 will be moving on to a vote in the Senate. At the same time, a bill was introduced by Representative Linda Rosenthal, Democrat, New York, A067. Both Democrats. Just saying. So A8688, which would prohibit the sale of e-liquid in flavors other than tobacco on or menthol, is on the agenda for Tuesday, June 5th. This last Tuesday, June 5th, 2018 at 1 p.m. So New York now has two bills that would do essentially the same thing, ban the sale of any flavored tobacco products. And because we are considered a tobacco product, even though there is zero tobacco in this, we're still considered a tobacco product, unfortunately. So when states like California and New York say things like flavored tobacco products, they're not just talking about flavored cigarettes, they're talking about flavored vapor products as well. But they have two bills right now going through the process that are both essentially going to accomplish the same thing. I would not be shocked. I, I, I haven't seen the results. I haven't seen the results of the second one. The first one obviously passed 14 to one and it's going through the process. The second one, which has not been voted on, A6880, what? Hi, dyslexic math A over here. A8688, numbers are hard. A8688, I, I haven't seen any results from it. I, I don't know what happened. If anybody knows what happened, either in the San Francisco flavor ban or in these particular bills right here in New York, please let me know down in the comments below. Uh, give me some links to put in the description of this. I'm gonna link in the description of this to the CASA call to action, which unfortunately is, uh, is passed. The call to action time has passed.
fast. Some of these call to actions need to have an action done on them that same day or a few days. You don't have a lot of time. If you see a call to action in your state, jump on it. Jump on it right away and do it as quickly as you can because, I mean, we've seen in New York, they 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 went through this bill. It went through the, the process. It went through the Senate, I believe, 14 to 1 passed. And then the very next day, they introduced another piece of legislation that is another flavor ban that was, you know, introduced and going to be voted on within two days. They're trying to move quick. They're trying to sneak these by the public. And so when a CASA calls to action comes in, you just have to, you just got to jump on it right away. But that's what's going on in the United States. And we're going to file this next one under Meanwhile in Canada. This is a little news item that we talked about in the last podcast a little bit, but I really wanted to mention it here. This comes from the official Government of Canada website, Canada.ca. And I'll put a link to this article down in the description because I want everybody to read it. I want want everybody to read this and share this. So Meanwhile in Canada. And, And keep in mind, this is from the official Canadian government website, the Tobacco and Vaping Products Act, the TVPA, became a law on May 23rd, 2018. Adults can now legally get vaping products with nicotine as a less harmful option than smoking. So back in the day, I mean, even when I say back in the day, I mean, throughout the last few years, Canada has not been a big cheerleader of vaping. Canada was very strict in their border patrol and customs patrol. I had uh, giveaway winners in the past that had their products that, you know, that had their packages confiscated at the border because it was vapor products. We couldn't ship any liquid to Canada. It would get confiscated at the border. Uh, Canada was just a, all right, we, we can't, we just can't ship to Canada. I apologize. We, we just can't do it because Canada is so strict on vapor products. Well, as of May 23rd, 2018, all my Canadian vapors can just order freely from anywhere they want. They will no longer get stopped at the border. And basically what this is, is a big uh, uh, information, like a uh, aggregation of vaping information. Wow, that didn't make any sense. But it starts off here and it says, if you are a smoker, quitting smoking is the best thing you can do to improve your health. There is support available to help you quit. Completely replacing cigarette smoking with a vaping product will reduce your exposure to harmful chemicals. If you are not a smoker, vaping can increase your exposure to some harmful substances that could negatively affect your health. That, coming from the Canadian government, is just an overall breath of fresh air and is absolutely, absolutely factual. In fact, the reference that they cite when they say completely replacing cigarette smoking with vapor products will reduce your exposure to harmful chemicals, they give you a reference, you know, at the bottom here. And where they got this information from is the public health consequences of e-cigarettes. A census study report of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, the National Academies Press, guess where? Washington, D.C., United States. So the Canadian government is citing uh, a study that was done in the United States, in Washington, D.C., and the Canadian government has concluded that vaping, it says completely replacing cigarette smoking and with vapor products will reduce your exposure to harmful chemicals. And that came from a study done in the United States. Yet in the United States, all we're doing is vilifying vaping and trying to get people to not vape and smoke instead. And look, I know that's that's real tin foily hat, right? That's that's real tin foil hat thing to say. But logically, I can't see any reason why they're vilifying vaping so much if not to keep people smoking. I don't see any other rational uh, option there. And so back to this article, it is very detailed. They go over what is vaping. They explain what vaping is. They even use terms such as mods, vapes, sub ohm tanks. They go over a lot of things like liquids and what what are the components of liquids and what's the nicotine being used in the liquids and how the liquids are are made and nicotine is a suspended solution in these liquids and the liquids can have different milligram ratings of you know different nicotine levels and some are really high and some of them are really low and it's a lot of I mean it's a lot of vaping information. There's another part on here that says if you're a smoker 
vaping versus smoking. I'm going to read this directly from the official Canadian government website. I just like saying that. Starts off and it says, vaping is less harmful than smoking. Many of the toxic and cancer causing chemicals in tobacco and the tobacco smoke form when tobacco is burned. And of course they cite their references down below. So you can actually read the studies that these conclusions are based on. Someone send this website over to Scott Godlib, please. Vaping products do not contain tobacco. Yep, you're right. They don't. Good on you, Canada. They do not involve burning or producing smoke. And except for nicotine, vaping products typically only contain a fraction of the 7,000 chemicals found in tobacco or tobacco smoke and at lower levels. Harm reduction. Switching from tobacco cigarettes to vapor products will reduce a person's exposure to many toxic and cancer-causing chemicals. As a step towards quitting cigarettes, many smokers may go through a transition period when they use both e-cigarettes and vaping products. Studies have shown short-term general health improvements in those who have completely switched from smoking cigarettes to vaping products. In that last sentence I just read, studies have shown short-term general health improvements in those who have completely switched from smoking cigarettes to vapor products. The source that they list is the same one as before. The Public Health Consequences of E-Cigarettes, a census study report of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, the National Academies Press, Washington, D.C., United States. I'm so glad that they're doing like uh, construction up on the roof. I love that nonstop pounding hammer sound in the background of my videos. Thank you. Well, so that's just gonna be a thing throughout the vlog. We'll see how long the pounding and hammering lasts. But they go over a lot. They go over, like I said, mods and liquids, smoking versus vaping. They have a risks of vaping area on here as well. It says if you're not a smoker, vaping can increase your exposure to some harmful chemicals that could negatively affect your health. Vaping could also expose you to nicotine, which is addictive. So uh, yeah, nicotine is addictive. That's, that's the general, like general, consensus is that nicotine is an addictive substance. I've been doing a lot of reading and a lot of researching about nicotine and it's very, very fascinating. I would love to talk about it on the vlog at some point. I just don't have enough information available to really speak to it accurately. And that's what I want to do is speak to it accurately, but accurately, but there's a lot of studies that have been done on, uh, on nicotine and, and nicotine dependency and just how, just how addictive is nicotine maybe outside of a cigarette. Some interesting things I've been reading about how nicotine becomes more addictive inside of a cigarette. A lot of the chemicals in cigarettes are meant to enhance the effect that nicotine has on your body, creating a stronger dependency on it when you're using it in a, in a burning tobacco form. It's just all, all, all very interesting. Interesting. But it goes on to say, there are also concerns about the appeal of vaping products among youth and their potential to promote tobacco use. If you are a smoker, vaping is a less harmful option than smoking. You know, and this is stuff that, uh, this is stuff that we've been talking about for years and, and years and years, and we see the science and we see where the science leads. And again, it's just, it's just real nice to see that in print, black and white. If you are a smoker, vaping is a less harmful option than smoking. And I'll say it one more time, it's on the official Canadian government website. And what I like most about all of this, and it continues down, they talk about uh, health risks of vaping with nicotine. They say things like nicotine is, is not known to cause cancer. It is approved for use in nicotine replacement therapies, such as the patch of the gum. However, there are risks linked to nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive substance. Vaping products could also result in symptoms of dependence on nicotine. They talk about how, uh, you know, kids and youth are, are heavily affected by nicotine nicotine in their brain and their development. And that's absolutely, of course, we don't want any underage vaping ever. I mean, I haven't ever met a vapor or talked to a company or seen a company that has said, yes, we, we, we want underage vaping. We want, we want kids vaping as soon as they, as soon as they are allowed to, as soon as it's possible for them to vape, we want them vaping. That's, that's never, ever happened ever. So of course, underage kids should never, never be vaping. This is a product for adults. They cover lots of other stuff as far as inhaling PG and 
VG. They cover things like uh, diacetyl. They cover things like sweeteners and flavoring. And really what this is mostly is a big information block. This is for people that are smokers that want to learn a little bit more about vaping and they're learning it directly from the Canadian government. And the Canadian government is actually insanely factual in what they're reporting here. They even cover things like device malfunctions and, and, and batteries. It says injuries from vaping product malfunctions, including explosions and fires have occurred. For more information about product safety requirements and how to protect yourself, read Vaping Product Safety and Regulation. They have a whole other website, whole other page on their website dedicated to safely using batteries and chargers and things like this. In fact, unfortunately, when that gentleman passed away from a battery malfunction in Florida, what the BBC did in the UK, because, you know, the UK is embracing vaping, but what the BBC did is they put up a big post on their BBC website that was like, hey, here's what happened. Yes, batteries are dangerous. Here's what you need to know to protect yourself. Here's what you need to know to be safe. Batteries and wraps and charging and, and here's how you do it safely. They actually offered up some like helpful, constructive advice, some guidance for people, as opposed to in the United States where they turned it into a, well, we should definitely ban vaping because look how dangerous they are. Un fucking real. I do not feel like a free American lately. I'll tell you that. But anyway, that's awesome. I like it. I'm not going to sit here and read this whole thing. I feel like I've been reading a little bit too much of it anyway. I want other people to really dig into this and read it and absorb this information because it's just fantastic. But shout out to Canada. Shout out to all my Canadian vapors up there. You have taken a step in the right direction and you are now on the correct side of history. And I'll throw a link down in the description to that as well. How much time do I have left? Oh my gosh, I spent way too much time on that. Okay, I don't have time to cover this. Uh, it's a little bit older of a video. A fellow named Gareth sent this over to me and it's a BBC report on smoking versus vaping. It's a video on Facebook that is just fantastic. They have this guy and he's in a doctor's office and they're testing his exhaled air from his lungs for any sort of, uh, you know, uh, toxic uh, carcinogens or anything like that. So he vapes and then they test it and, they sm and then he smokes and then they test it and you can kind of see these differences. There's two doctors on hand and this was broadcast on the BBC it's a fantastic video clip. Thank you, Gareth. I will link it down in the description, but there's one last thing that I really, really quickly wanted to talk about, and this comes from The Motley Fool, and The Motley Fool is an investment website, and they are, you know, they give investment, uh, you know, advice for people who do the stock market stuff. I don't have any well, that's not true. I do have some Starbucks stock. Ooh, I should check on my Starbucks stock. I wonder how that's doing. But the big headline on this is how Altria is transforming itself to keep its lead. And this whole article is written from the perspective of investors or potential investors, right? This whole article is about how the vapor industry has disrupt Altria's business model so intensely that they're having to completely restructure the company. They had an entire up upper and mid-level management restructuring. They're focusing on things now like reduced harm products, vapor products, because vaping has been so intrusive to not just their business model, but their bottom line as well. They need to keep their lead. Right now, Altria is, you know, the king of big tobacco. And what has taken down, what has, you know, started to chip away at the king of big tobacco? Yeah, vaping vapor products. Because of vaping, Altria is in danger of kind of, I don't want to say falling by the wayside, but they're in danger of, I mean, shrinking, falling, downsizing, lower numbers. And I'm just going to read the last paragraph on here. It says, what's ahead for Altria? This is a huge long article that goes over a lot of stuff that I'm not really interested in. It's like uh, this CEO stepped down and is being replaced by this CEO. Oh, well, fan fucking tastic. I don't care about that. This CEO is leading up uh, Newmark, which is, you know, uh, Altria's vapor product division and, and is going to be heading up innovation in, in Newmark. But at the end here, it says, what's ahead for Altria? It says, obviously, just having a corporate restructuring won't solve the problem of actually coming up with good products that people want to buy. 
but Altria's strategy does send a message throughout the company and to the broader tobacco industry that the Marlboro Maker is serious about building out its capacity beyond traditional cigarettes and its other legacy products. So the products that Altria has been relying on to make money since its inception is now in danger of just completely disappearing. So the products that Altria has relied on since the inception of the company are now in danger of, you know, not making them money anymore because less people are smoking because vaping. I truly and honestly never thought I would see that happen. I remember growing up as a kid in the 80s and I mean, I remember seeing Marlboro commercials on television. I remember seeing Joe Camel commercials on television. There was a time in the United States when tobacco was king. I mean, everybody was smoking. Even into the 80s when they directly linked it with lung cancer, people were still smoking like crazy. In fact, the first job I ever had, I was a bus boy at a buffet. I'm sorry, I realize this isn't getting to know Grim Green, but the first job I ever had, I was a bus boy in a buffet, in a casino, and we had a smoking section. And the smoking section was just this huge area, not cut off, no doors, no windows, no separate entrances into a smoking section. It was just a corner of the buffet seating area where people were allowed to smoke. And you knew it was the smoking section because there were ashtrays on the tables. That is the only thing that separated the smoking section from the non-smoking section were ashtrays on the tables. There was a time in America where a lot of people smoked and companies like Philip Morris and Altria, big tobacco companies were just raking it in. They had their big money rakes and they were just raking in money from tobacco products. And that is in danger now because of this? Because of vapor products? That is fucking awesome. I just love that so much. And let me tell you, when I started vaping in 2009 and there were maybe, I don't know, a thousand vapors on the ECF forum, all, I mean, all together, maybe a thousand vapors on the ECF forum to go from, you know, uh, hammering a nail into a cartomizer so that I could use it in a tank back in the day. Fast forward to 2018 and we have the best hardware that we've ever had, the best, you know, liquids that we've ever had, the most convenient convenient pod systems that we've ever had. This industry has grown thrown, grown so much that it's actually affecting big tobacco. I, I see that as nothing but a victory. Nothing but a victory. Anyway, that's, uh, that's what I got for news and advocacy. Like I said, I will post all the links for the news and advocacy stuff down in the description. All the other links, all the links to external vape shops or to vapor products will not be on YouTube. You will have to find those on grimgreen.com. But yeah, that's what I got for news and advocacy. So oh, it always bums me out because after news and advocacy is when we would usually do the beer segment, right? It's okay. It's okay. You know what? It's fine. We're going to do the beer segment soon. It's coming back and it's coming back in a big way. So we're going to do the beer segment soon. But right now, what I want to do, I have a whole pile of vape mail over here. It's time to open it. So, no time to waste. We're just gonna dive right into some vape mail. Oh, this is a... Uh, I have one of these. I have one of these, but it doesn't work very well. This is the... Uh, this is the IQ... It's it's the unfortunately named IQ 3-sex. Yeah, it's the 3-sex. It's not S-E-X. It's seconds, like 3 seconds, 3-sex. Yeah, and it's a large, like, uh, you know, Apple looking pod system. This is made by Hankson. This is the, you know, uh, the, the IQ. Uh, Casey Pickle really vapes that IQ level a lot. This is made by the same company. It looks pretty dope. It's black and golden. Yeah, that actually looks kind of dope. Yeah, and then you get this little pod here. I don't know. This is something that, uh, this is something I might set up in the vlog. I might set this up and vape it in the vlog. But it's the IQ 3 sex. Oh, and it comes with a, uh, that's weird. It comes with a little really, re really rigid, really rigid bottle with like 
a needle nose on it because I'm assuming you're gonna need this to fill up the... Let me just show you. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's it's shiny black. Uh, it's got a little window right there so you can see the juice in your tank. It's finished with this like gold rim. It kind of looks iPhone-y, I guess, a little bit. It is awfully large for a pod system. I mean, when you think of a pod system, you think of something tiny. You think of something small like this, small and pocketable. This, I don't know, it's big. This is borderline like, might as well just be a mod. I mean, not quite that big, but I don't know, it's big, but it looks pretty cool. Moving right along to something that may or may not be vape mail. Oh, this is a thing. Oh, this is a thing. I see what's happening in here. Let me read the note. I like getting, uh, I like notes. I like seeing personalized, like, whoops, hi microphone. I like seeing, <laughs> I like seeing personalized, like handwritten notes. It's been a while since I've seen a note written with pencil on like, a, you know, notebook paper. I feel like I'm back in high school, but anyway, uh, uh, dear Nick, sorry this package took so long. Moving to a different state sucks. I hope you enjoy these new office decorations. I also included an old mod that I would like you to have from my collection. Meeting you at ECC was amazing. I wish we had time to talk one-on-one -on -one about music, Star Wars, and everything else we could think of. Absolutely. I, you know, I, I try, I really try my best at, at every vape event, no matter how many people are there, no matter who's there or anything like that. I try to give whoever I'm talking to my full undivided attention. I feel like that's the least I could do. You, you, you know, this person spent all this time to come to ECC or to come to a vape event, to, to meet me, to shake my hand. I, I'm going to try to give you my undivided attention. You want to talk about vaping? We can talk about vaping. You want to talk about Star Wars? Hell yeah. I'll always talk about Star Wars. I'll always talk about music and metal and horror movies and all sorts of nonsense. I won't make this letter super long, but I hope you enjoy the packet. Love, love what you do. And the rest of the Grim Army inspired me to do what I do now. Cheers, my vape bro. Uh, best regards, Case K. I said it correctly. Case K. Instagram, Yokai Vapors, underscore Yokai, underscore Vapors. Very cool. P.S. This doesn't have to be in the vlog if you don't want it to. I apologize for any misspelled words and sloppy handwriting. All is forgiven, Case K. All is forgiven. So before I get to this mod that's in here, I want to look at this. Uh, I want to look. <gasps> what? 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 These are cool, dude. Okay, first things first. Here we go. Stormtrooper, Stormtrooper Sunburst. I, I love this, but wait till you see this, ready? Imperial Guard, and these are all on like nice little canvas squares, easy hanging canvas squares. Look at that, Imperial Guard. Fuck, that is cool. Did you do these from a, uh, did you do these from, from like a stencil? Like you, like the white and the black, fuck it. I don't care, that just looks super cool. Imperial Guard, and then lastly, Oh, Kylo Ren. Probably the, the most compelling character I have ever seen in a Star Wars movie. I like Kylo Ren's character more than I like, uh, I mean, maybe with the exception of Han Solo, but that kind of makes sense since Ben is Han Solo's son. I love Kylo Ren. I, I love what they're doing with the story. I, unpopular opinion, I fucking love Star Wars Episode Eight. I just do. There's no way around it. It's an unbelievable movie, and I can't understand why so many people hate it so much. It, it's beautiful from beginning to end. The story, with the exception of, like, sure, the Canto Bite scenes, sure, that's that's dumb. I can I can leave or take. That didn't offend me. It didn't bother me. I didn't go, well, that's not my Star Wars, because they went to Canto Bite the gambling planet. I just love it. I just love it, and I can't help it. Thank you. These are amazing. I know exactly where they're going to go right now. I have a wall. I have a wall space right here. Let me try to show you. I've got a wall space, like, right there. You see this wall space right here? Boom. Ch -ch -ch -ch. They're going to go right there. Ch -ch 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 straight down one after the other that's gonna be dope that's gonna be so cool dude thank you and case k also included an old school oh this is old school you know what <sighs> i had something for the retro vaping planned already but maybe i'll just keep this a secret and we'll do it for the retro vaping hmm? i think that's a fantastic idea case k and i'm just gonna set this down right here to wait for the retro vaping segment because it is a fairly <laughs> retro vaping 
I almost just stabbed myself. Cut towards your buddy, not towards your body. It is a very, uh, very retro vapey vape right there. And it honestly kind of goes along with what we've been doing in the retro vaping segment so far. Something else from As Vape here. This is like four vlogs in a row that I've got something from As Vape. Zeta, mouth to lung RTA. Whoa, it's actually like in a plastic box. This isn't a cardboard box. This box is plastic. Jazz Vape's getting a little bit fancy over there, aren't they? Now how the hell do I open it? Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Look at that tiny, tiny little mouth to lung tank. The As Vape Zeta, and it's called the Zeta, but it has Equitas written all over it. And I know for sure that Asvape is not associated with the Equitas RDA at all, but Asvape uses the term and the word Equitas on a lot of their stuff. It's written on most of their packaging. It's on a bunch of their atomizers, even though this is called the Zeta, it still says Equitas all over it. There you go. That's the Zeta or Zeta mouth to lung tank. It's mostly stainless steel. It does have a bunch of obnoxious engravings and shit all over it that I, I hate. I can't stand that much engraving. I don't need these like, uh, you know, what looks like like stalks of wheat on there. I just don't need that. And of course we got that wonderful, beautiful stabilized piss Ultim tank down there at the bottom. Yeah, this has to be strictly a round wire build tank. It just, it just has to be. It's a postless deck and the holes for your wires look about the diameter of like, 22 millimeter, like 22, not 22 millimeter, 22 gauge wire. Okay, I'll show you. See that right there? You see that postless deck? Do you see where the leads are supposed to go? Doesn't that look about the diameter of like 22 gauge wire? Then you have wick holes right there. Of course, the airflow comes up right through the center. But those are some tiny, tiny holes for your leads. I, I don't think you could fit like a fuse clapped in or an alien or anything in here. I think this is strictly for round wire, which is honestly kind of a bummer. And where are, oh, there are little, little flathead screws in there. Just the tiniest little flathead screws you've ever seen. Are you telling me that this tank doesn't come any more apart than that? It's got a ceramic chimney on the inside of the tank. The, cer the chimney is completely ceramic. I have no possible idea of what the benefits of that could be. And I cannot seem to get this tank any more apart than it is right now. It looks like there's a seam here. It looks like it should thread open. Oh, maybe it's reverse threaded. Oh, nope. Good lord. Okay, Zeta. Okay, Zeta. I honestly don't really even want to fiddle with you right now. This is another package that I'm 100% sure is not any vape mail. This came from uh, someone named Seth. Oh, what are you? What is this? If I open this up, is it gonna like summon Pinhead? Is this a, is this a puzzle? What's going on here, Seth? Are you gonna blow up if I open this? Did you mail me a bomb? I probably probably shouldn't joke about that. I've never been more confused in my life than I am right now. I can't open this. Can't, it doesn't slide in any direction. All right. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Seth. You might have to give me a tutorial on, uh, on what this is. Does anybody recognize this mystery box? I have no idea what it is or how to open it. It seems to be screwed shut, like clamped shut on one side. I don't want to take out eight tiny screws to open this. And I'm afraid if I take out eight tiny screws to open this, I'm gonna lose the little nuts on the other side. Um, all right, cool. Thanks, Seth. Thanks for the mystery white box that I'm sure I'll open at some point. Okay, fine, I'm gonna try now. Uh, sorry, Seth, but I could just stop with the hammering. Uh, I apologize, Seth. I had to completely break this <laughs> to get it open. These are the pieces that broke off. Here's the lid that broke off. There is a note on the inside which might give us more information as to what's inside the white mystery box. Uh, Dear Nick, the last three years has been a journey. My goal has always been to draw people to vaping by creating functional art, by showing people something beautiful. It opens up, to, it opens them up to the idea of vaping. So many smokers slash anti-vapers found it easy to dismiss vaping until I showed them my work or the other vape artisans work. 
work. It seems like the whole world is against you until you greet them with a smile and a device that represents the industry you have so much passion and dedication for. Needless to say, I've been working hard and pushing forward on my mission to create the most beautiful mods that are within the reach of the masses. You know just as much as I do that if it weren't for the people that support and care about us, we'd be going nowhere fast. Absolutely. I still have a very long way to go before I reach my true potential, but here's just a little something that represents where I stand for now. Take care, Nick. Hope to see you soon. P.S. Sorry for the awful penmanship. I didn't improve much after second grade. Me neither, Seth. Me neither. And very well said. And what's in here is... <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. This is fucking beautiful. But Seth, please find... For the love of God, would you stop the goddamn hammering? You need to find some better, uh... Packaging, Seth, I hope that you don't ship your mods to everybody in this mystery white box, but I'm just gonna go straight up close with this. This thing is beautiful, Seth. Would you look at this squonker? Would you just look at it? Look at it. Look at this beautiful emerald green acrylic stabilized wood. Stabilized wood on the back and it's all polished to just a beautiful finish. Spring-loaded 510, I'm assuming it's fully mechanical as well. Soft silicone squonk bottle. I pop this door off, yeah, you can see, fully mechanical right there. Silicone soft squonk bottle, battery compartment. And the way he's got these hinges, or the, you know, these tabs right here that fit perfectly, perfectly into these other tabs, and it's just, feels smooth once they're locked in together. This this is a beautiful mod, Seth. Um, Seth is uh, Lazy Vapors. Lazy Vapors on Instagram, you should go check it out. I've used a multitude, multitude of his mods. I had a, a dual 18650 uh, Lazy Vapors box mod that I absolutely loved. It had a MyTech switch. I brought it with me to multiple, multiple events. I just loved that mod. He made me single 26650 mech mods or single 26 six six fifty mods as well like even just as an experiment i was like you know i'd love to see a single twenty six six fifty box mod and he's like oh yeah we can definitely do that and he did one and i was like i actually imagined it like this and told him about it and he's like oh yeah we can do that and and made it custom made two mods seth i, I can't get over this this is beautiful this is a beautiful mod even if it comes in a really bizarre white box that i had to physically break <laughs> to get open. This is something I'm going to be using soon. This is something I'm going to be using very, very soon. I want to I want to spend a little time with this. This isn't something I want to rush to get set up. I want to get to know it a little bit better. Battery, sled, there's your squonk bottle. Does the squonk bottle come out at all? Of course it does. And you got this squishy silicone squonk bottle. Dang, dang, dang. Very cool, Seth. Very cool. Whenever I talk about artistry or things like a, you know, a little bit more crafty of vaping stuff. This is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. This is the kind of stuff we used to have back in the day where it was just a few people that were really passionate about vaping and they wanted to create some amazing products. Less like, you know, uh, Vandy Vapes, maze RTA, just terrible and useless. And more things that are handcrafted that people actually put their time and energy into building and creating and creating like a beautiful crafty product. I mean, video does not do this justice. Pictures do not do this justice. You have to hold this and see this and see this transparent, like bright emerald acrylic on there mixed in with this wood and how beautifully this kind of all fits together the way, like I was saying, like those little tabs connect and those little tabs connect and it just creates this beautiful smooth edge on there. Crafty, crafty vaping and I'm a big fan, Seth. I think I just got something from E-Leaf for like the first time in fucking forever. Perfect, a perfect stark contrast to what I just received. This is the E-Leaf Pico Squeeze 2. Completely, completely stark contrast to what I just received in the mail. Pico Squeeze 2, it's a single 2700. Got some big ass knurling here on the battery compartment. Those threads are a little bit on the rough side there, Elite. Oh, holy shit, and it comes with a 21700 battery inside of it. There is a sticker 
over the negative side so it can't, you know, activate or turn on or anything like that. Thankfully, I have seen uh, Chinese companies in the past that have shipped their stuff with batteries in it and that's it. Just shipping a mod with a battery already in it. No sort of, uh, you know, coverings or protection over those contacts. You got a little RDA banger here with a little beauty ring, air quotes, beauty ring, which of course it looks just so much better without that beauty ring. Wow, that's a wacky design right there. Yeah, that's actually kind of cool. Single coil RDA in there, uh, one directional airflow on one side of it. Big squeezy bottle right there. I mean, it's uh, it feels incredibly substantial it feels like a like a heavy weighty sort of uh substantialness in your hand it does have the awkwardly placed button on the back kind of like that arc mod kind of like that luna squonker it's not on the front or the back so you can't finger or thumb it it's kind of on the side here so you have to hold it a little bit differently honestly like this you have direct access to the bottle direct access to the button that could be a, a rad little squonker just kidding. I'm, not, I'm just pretending. Acting! All right, E-Leaf Pico Squeeze. What else do we got down here? This. Okay, let's, let's read the note first. Thank you for taking interest in our Crescendo box mods. Crescendo? Oh, it's called Crescendo. That's kind of cool. I actually really like that name. Crescendo box mods. We are certainly proud of these devices. We've worked tirelessly to perfect the design. Here's a brief outline of the box you just received. Two 2700 batteries in series. For user protection and power regulation, the switch a 3035 MOSFET is used. As for the wiring, 14 gauge stranded copper is used throughout. However, the bottom sled contacts are tied together with 16 gauge solid core copper, as well as the connection from the upper positive terminal to the 510 connection. I smoke vapor retails these boxes for about 50 bucks. My original idea for this mod was to keep it affordable for any vapor who wishes to dive deeper into the vaping rabbit hole. I never understood why certain custom mods were so expensive and unaffordable by the vast majority of the average vaping community. We certainly hope you enjoy this mod. Thanks again for taking time and interest. If you have any questions, da -da 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 -da, ba -da 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 -da. Nathan from I Smoke Vapor. Oh yeah, look at that. That is a big, that's a honker. That is a honking mod right here, dude. It is a fully uh, 3D printed dual 2700 series box mod, which I haven't done... Huh. I haven't done series or stacked batteries in quite a while. Yeah, it's 3D printed. It's all fairly straightforward. Positive, negative, positive, negative. 3D printing on this actually seems fairly nice, at least on the outside. This back, the side here, the top, it all feels real good. On the inside, it's a little bit messy, a little bit haphazard. The, the 3D printing, you can tell, eh. It wasn't great. <laughs> you can see where the machine kind of went and left some like trails in a few places and a little rough spots in a few places. But then it has this big, uh, big old design on the front here. There's a V and like a, a tree or wings or something like that. It actually feels very cool. And it does have an insanely clicky MyTech switch. Damn, that's kind of a big, weird, crazy mod, dude. I don't know. Thoughts? What do you think? I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comments below. It's got a 22 millimeter uh, raised 510 on there, which is kind of a bummer. It's a little bit of a bummer. It's a box mod, so I really would just love to have seen this 510 connection be flush, be flat, so when you screw an atomizer down, it looks like it's flat and flush with the box mod, rather than sort of like sitting up on a little bit of like that 510 pedestal that happens. On the inside, I Smoke Vapor Ink. This is number 17. Dang, all right, cool. Very cool, very cool. So lastly, I have another package from Squid Industries. They are the, you know, double barrel TAC-22. Oh, TAC-22. Very good. But they seem to have sent me another package and I'm wondering if this is just another TAC-22 on the inside? Whoa, what? Whoa, this is weird. That is a weird, this is weird. Oh, this is a weird box mod that I've never seen before. This is the Ovanti Vega. I, I know, I'm just as surprised as you are. Wow, this is crazy. I, I genuinely don't know how I feel about this right now. It, it's, it's pretty fairly comfortable 
in the hand, honestly. And the button there, that's a weird placement, but it's, it's, it reminds me of that, uh, that Ogvape V200 where it had that sort of hidden button in the front panel and you, and you clicked it like this. Up, down, and select. It's very knurled and rigid along the sides here. Look at these ribs. Yeah, there you go. It's sort of this matte aluminum. Big button right there. Very ribbed right there. Holy crap, look at those ridges. On the black, on the back, it's just branded on that matte black. I really want to get some batteries in here and look at this screen. Please select the mode you prefer. You can choose between expert mode or novice mode. Well, I'm gonna jump right. Well, let's start with novice mode. Really, kind of a weird screen. That is kind of a really weird screen. Uh, looks like to be variable wattage. It looks like a, a a train tracks going through a stargate. Kind of looks like. A, oh, now there's a screensaver with a mountain on it. Yeah, I mean, am I wrong? Does that look like train tracks going through a stargate? Wattage up, wattage down. Let's see if there's any sort of menu. Nope, now everything's just gone. Oh, come on, man. One, two, three, four, five. Come back! Where did you go? What was going on here? The, the screen just disappeared. The screen just turned off. Ah, there is a whole menu system on here. You can change the font. You can change the theme. You can change the LED. Is there an LED somewhere on here that I'm not aware of? Oh, there is. Oh, look at that. Your LED pulses with color. It's weird that you can't... Okay. This isn't a review for this, but yes, there is LEDs. You see, I'm going to I'm going to swip through the colors here. You're not going to be able to see it. There's LEDs along the side. You see they just turn purple, they just turn pink, just turn white, red. Is that yellow, green, purple? Those don't turn on when you press the button. They either have to be always on, always off, or breathing, which means they like like very sci-fi like pulsing lights behind your mod constantly always happening whether you're using it or not or random just random you can have the colors come up randomly and without warning yeah it's just fading through colors now and it's not tied at all to whether or not you're vaping even change the font you get a choice of two fonts whoa this is so weird dude i'm digging too much into this that's the problem is i just wanted to vape it but i'm digging too much into it and the menu system is real weird they should call novice mode normal mode and they should call advanced mode pain in the ass mode okay finally 70 watts here we go All that for a very 70 watty vape. All right, cool. Well, there you go. It's the Vega. It's a thing, and it's here, and I'll be using it until I don't use it no more. And I honestly don't know what that means. I'll be using it until it gets, you know, like a full review, or maybe never gets a full review. I don't know. What do you think? If I have to go on the record right now, I'm going to say Squid Industries. I like the TAC-21 far better. I mean, <laughs> far far better than that Vega. And I don't know if you're producing or making that Vega in any way, but uh, I like the TAC-21 much more. All right, well, yeah, we're done. We're done with the vape mail. We got to the end of the vape mail. What I'm gonna do right now is just spend a little bit of time cleaning out and sort of evacuating some of the vapor that I've been creating in here. I, I don't know what I'm gonna set up. I think I wanna set up that IQ. I think I wanna set up that IQ three sex pod system. I don't have the time or energy right now to really set up a squonker. Plus I wanna spend a little bit more time with those squonkers like, Setting, setting up a squonker always takes, you know, a little bit of time. Right now, I'd have to rebuild something in order to get that squonker working. Shit, man. I don't know. All right, here's what we're going to do. I really want to set up this Lazy Vapors box mod squonker because it's so pretty. It's something that I just want to hold and use and hold and use. So that's what I'm going to do. But first, I'm going to clean up all this stuff. I'm going to set up the squonker. We'll be right back. Okay, cool. So everything's got cleaned up and I went ahead and set up that Lazy Vapors Squonk box mod and it's video isn't going to do this justice. Pictures are not going to do this justice. It's just a freaking beautiful box. The way that it's polished and coated and shined, the way it all fits together, the way that these hinges fit together and create this very nice, smooth, sort of rounded edge on the edge there. Unbelievable. I mean, the amount of detail and work that went into this is kind of unbelievable. The button sits flush with the front and you press it kind of 
into the housing of the mod. It's obviously not clicky in any way because it's fully mechanical, but this door comes off and I have a single 18650 on the inside and I filled up this bottle with Milk Plus and I went ahead and rebuilt that Gambit RDA from a while ago, from about a year ago, that Gambit RDA, still just a rocking little flavor banger of an RDA or RSA, I should say these days. These are these are called RSAs, rebuildable squonking atomizers because we needed we needed more terminology in the vape world. We can't just call everything an atomizer, that would be too easy. And I have one of those uh, sort of slightly matchy matchy, it's aqua and green. This is a DHD Paquito or Chiquita drip tip. I don't, I never remember the name of these tiny drip tips. All I remember is the nub and all I remember is the macon, the macaroon drip tip. But anyway, I've been, I've been sitting here just vaping this, vaping this, vaping this, and it's a, it's an intensely enjoyable experience. This mod just feels real nice in the hand. It feels fairly substantial, but not like a paperweight, not like crazy heavy. I just dig that Gambit RDA, that little flavor banger RDA. It's so good. And I know I just reviewed that Karma RDA, the K-R-M-A Karma RDA. This is, I feel, a superior RDA to that one, even though the Gambit, I think, is a little bit more expensive. I find that the Gambit has much smoother, much smoother airflow overall. But it's not about that. We're talking about this box mod. Honestly, there's not much to say about it. I just love the way that this looks. I don't think that he could have picked a better type of like wood acrylic combo for me than this combo right here. That like light and dark wood with the green acrylic. And on the back, okay, look at this. And on the back right here, there's more acrylic. And then there's just this little acrylic corner right there that kind of just is there and is neat and this wood goes from like a smoky color to a light color with green and then on this side light light wood with a green acrylic right there you can see your battery it's rad i mean this is beautiful this is a beautiful mod top to bottom and it's just so shiny and lacquered and great and there's your button and it goes into the mod and just kind of hits that contact right there. And it's honestly, I mean, this is a single coil in here. It's right around a 0.2, I believe, on a single 18650. Still hitting nice. And this isn't, you know, this isn't one of those mods like a mech mod that's just going to hit real hard, like right out of the gate and just be like a super clouds bro cloud situation. This is definitely the, the sort of like small single 18650 squonker that you just put a little flavor banger on and you take those long, very long, satisfying drags. It's funny because I keep holding this like I hold that uh, Asmodus Luna, like I hold it like this and I kind of expect the button to be up here in this area and it's completely not. This is like an old school button that's kind of on the front here and I kind of had to like readjust the way that I hold this because of the button placement. Good. Wow, that's good. Wow, that's satisfying. That gambit on top of this box mod is just a really nice match. It's almost, dare I say it, a match made in heaven. I really wish I hadn't said that. Anyway, I was just trying to think of something cliche to say there, right? Like, you say cliche things. Oh, it's a match made in heaven. I I'm very happy with this. I'm very glad I set this up. I I'm having a wonderful time vaping this. Seth, you done good. This is, f I mean, this, you have come so far. I remember seeing Lazy Vapors and Seth making mods way, way back in the day. I mean, years and years ago, and they've come a long way. He's really, he's really put a lot into these, into these newer mods that he's releasing. Anyway, anyway, I'm going to wrap this up just because I just, I just keep gushing about this mod because look at it. It's, it's so pretty, you guys. It's so pretty. Okay, I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to keep vaping this. What I want to do right now before we get into retro vaping, which I do have a retro vaping that was sent to me courtesy of Case K. Oh, and I also want to show you Case K. Look at where these ended up. Yeah, right there. You see those? See those right there? Choo, choo, choo right down the wall, right where I said I was gonna put them. I put them right there. It's really pulling the office together, man. What I want to do right now, real quick, let's do getting to know Grim Green. So what we're going to talk about today on Getting to Know Grim Green is this right here. 
So many people have been asking me about this, and it's time to talk about it. I genuinely didn't think anybody was going to notice this thing sitting over on my couch, but I guess it's kind of plain, you know, uh, clear as day, plain view right there. So what it is, obviously, this is, uh, this is a little Rick. This is a tiny Rick right here. I got this tiny little Rick from uh, Ronan out of Ireland. If you remember way back in the uh, Ireland Vape Fest video, uh, Ronan. I met Ronan and then we hung out later again in uh, Paris and he handed me off little Rick. I just like his little Rick. I like his little dangly legs. I like his weird awkward arms. I just like having a little Rick. And I didn't quite exactly know where to put that little Rick. And so I have another, uh, I don't know, I guess they're called plushies. I have another plushy thing from when I was just a mere child. The year was 1982 and I was five years old. The movie E.T. directed by Steven Spielberg had just come out and me being little, little five-year-old Nick, I just loved it. I just fell in love with E.T. the extraterrestrial. In fact, E.T. is one of the few movies that ever really made me cry. I had a lot of feels for that movie and especially little E.T. when E.T. is like white and he's laying in the river and he's sick. Tears. Tears for E.T. The other movies in my life that have really uh, made me emotional and made me cry were uh, Finding Neverland. Yeah, I know. I know, it's weird, it just made me real super emotional and it made me cry. And also, when I was a young kid, Superman, the original Superman with Christopher Reeve, the scene where he has to leave and go to Metropolis, and it's this beautiful shot where he's standing out in the field with his, with his mom, and he's telling his mom that he has to leave and go to Metropolis and all this stuff, that for some reason really made me, uh, really made me cry. But back to E.T. So, five years old, I get this. I get this E.T. little plushy, plushy guy. And this is directly from 1982. And it's seen, I mean, let's be honest, it's seen some better days. It's got some, uh, some burn marks on it. It's got some, some dirt and crud on it that I can't, that I just can't get off. But I got this little E.T. when I was five years old and I have kept it my whole life along with one other thing. I have one other thing. Maybe we'll talk about that in a getting to know Grim Green. I've got one other thing from when I was, I mean, under 10. I think I was four or five when I got this and I was five years old when I got this and, and I kept it this whole time. And it's just a little weird looking E.T., right? It looks like E.T. Hey, Elliot, Elliot. And I loved it. I loved this little thing. It, it was my favorite thing to play with. In fact, I used to have reoccurring nightmares about this little plushy doll right here. And it's because I loved E.T. so much and I loved this little plushy E.T. so so much. I used to have nightmares that uh, my family had gone out to dinner, like I had gone out to dinner with my family, and then this is all in my dream. This is what happened in the dream, and it was reoccurring. We would go out to dinner. I would go out to dinner with my family. We would come home back to the house only to discover that someone had broken into the house, but they broke into the house, and they didn't steal anything. All they did was go into my room, take my E.T. plushie, and pull its head off. In the dream, I remember coming home, seeing that the house had been broken into. I ran into my room to check on stuff and there was my E.T. sitting on the ground with its head torn off and like fluff coming out of it. And I would wake up just sad, just the most sad ever. And I would have to go find my E.T. to make sure that the head was still on it. But yeah, that's all it is. It's just a childhood toy. It's E.T. And then I make him hug Rick. I put him like this, like hugging Rick on the couch because they're such conflicting characters, aren't they? E.T. is like all about love and connection and Elliot and family and love and Elliot. And then on the other other side of the spectrum you have Rick who is basically a nihilistic god type of character who doesn't really care about anything or anyone there's infinite realities and infinite universes and ultimately nothing matters and you have nihilist Rick and so I like the idea of 
E.T. just hugging Mr. Nihilus Rick. And I picture Rick like he's trying to get away. He's like, oh, you, you, you're, you're hugging me. E.T.'s hugging me. And I just really like that. I think it's really funny. I think it's really funny seeing a giant E.T. hugging a tiny little Rick on my couch. And that's where I leave it. That's on my couch. You know, I grew up being a, a huge fan of sci-fi fantasy stuff. Thanks to my dad. Things like Star Trek and Star Wars and Buck Rogers and Battlestar Galactica and E. T. I grew up with E.T. and this is just one of those, you know, uh, links. You know, I don't keep a lot of stuff from when I was really, really young. I try not to be a hoarder. I try not to keep, you know, so much stuff. But there are a few things that I have in my possession from when I was a kid that are really important to me. And this E.T. Uh, this E.T. is one of them. And now he's hugging Rick. And now he just uh, he just lives on my couch. So if anybody in the future has any questions, and I get a lot of emails about. What is that? What is that thing? I had one guy email me recently and he took a screen capture from my vlog and then he like cropped it like super zoomed in on it and is like, what is that sitting on your couch? Well, wonder no more. It's just an E.T. holding Tiny Rick from uh, when I was a kid. And that's where E.T. and Tiny Rick live. So yeah, that's the story of the mysterious plushie over there on my couch. If anybody else has any questions that they would like to see answered in this here segment about me or myself, uh, me and myself and I. We have in the past talked about a lot of stuff, everything, like I said, from Star Wars and Star Trek to music to death metal, horror movies. We've talked about my tattoos. We've talked about my old jobs. We've talked about my old bands. But anything else you're curious about? Hopefully not too intrusive, but I'm definitely okay with some intrusiveness. You can send your questions on over to nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark it, getting to know Grim Green. And there's been uh, a lot recently. There's been a lot of real short questions. So we might have one of those like uh, rapid fire questions. Like someone sent in like, what's your favorite band and what's your favorite color? And so a lot of, a lot of quick ones like that. So I think that's what we're going to do next week for getting to know Grim Green. But yeah, what I want to do right now is it's time. It's time to jump into some retro vaping. All right, so we're gonna do some retro vaping, which means I need to track down an atomizer to use. Maybe I'll use that one. A retro vaping today, once again, huge shout out. Case K, he sent a, a package of Star Wars. Look at that, look at that Star Wars art on my wall. Let's zoom in on it. Let's really get a good look at that up there. Case K, that's, that's exactly where they ended up. All right, here we go. But Case K also sent along a mod. This is a mech mod. We've been doing a lot of mech mods here in the retro vaping segment. And speaking of the retro vaping segment, I'm really stoked that everybody enjoyed having, uh, you know, Raven Vapes Liam over for the retro vaping. Uh, I want to do it again. We're already talking about when are we going to do the next retro vaping, but it's going to be a thing. You know, we both have fairly busy schedules, I would say. And so we're going to try to find some time to do another, you know, really, really long-winded, like throwbacky sort of uh, retro vaping. But what we have to talk about today is this mech mod. And this mech mod comes from, yeah, smoke. Just so you know, the proper way to pronounce that is smoke. And this is the Magneto mod. So once upon a time in the vapor world, before smoke was making, you know, those alien kids or the, the big baby beast tanks or the smoke G-Priv, T-Priv, Prince baby beast coils. They used to make and manufacture and sell, uh, I don't know, sort of uh, poor quality mech mods. And it was a single 18650 telescoping mech mod. So this tube is just gonna telescope out right there. I don't know if it's just because of how old this is or if the switch never came out of this. I don't remember, it's been so long. I think this came out in 2013, something like that. And even looking down in here, that contact has seen better days. That contact is not a very super clean contact. It had the telescoping tube right here, and then it had a tip, you know, a, a top cap right here. This was 22 millimeters, and I'm about to throw a 25 millimeter uh, RDA on here, so it's gonna look real dumb. <laughs> oh, was this non-adjustable? Oh, okay, uh, okay, I just didn't have the right tool. You know, it's one of those things. I didn't have the right tool. I don't remember exactly how the Smoke Tech Magneto works. It is adjustable and it's a screw. It's a flathead screw, so I screwed this all the way down. 
still looks ridiculous with a 25 millimeter atomizer on a 22 millimeter mech mod, but you can crank this down and make sure that it's touching your 510. Just gonna grab a Sony VTC5A, throw that in there. Let's throw this on there. Yeah, dude, look in, ridiculous. Look at how ridiculous that looks. And the Smoke Tech Magneto did have a little bit of a locking ring on there. It was like six or seven turns, but you could unlock it and then lock it. So let's unlock it. Had some vent holes in the sides. And what's going on down here, as far as I can tell, since I can't seem to get this switch out and I don't want to break this particular mech mod, but your battery is sitting on a contact. It's in direct contact with the contact on the bottom and it's direct contact with the contact on the top. How many times did I just say contact? And what's happening on the inside of the switch is there's a contact on the bottom and everything's happening inside of the switch. So you have a contact right here that your battery's sitting on, then you have a contact right here with the switch, and those are touching inside of the of the little housing switch assembly right here. Anyway, enough talking. Let's see if this is actually going to work. Vapors. Whoa, that button got hot. Okay, that scared me. Open this right away. That comes out. Battery's good, but that button was hot as fuck. That's the first thing, if you're ever dealing with a mech mod, and especially if it's your first time using a mech mod or a particular mech mod in a while, that hot button is because of arcing happening in there. So, like I said earlier, Smoke Tech would make and manufacture poorly made, very shoddy mech mods. My battery's good, my battery's not hot. It's not a hybrid connection, so I don't have to worry about a hard short there. Let's just give this one more try, and if I can't vape it, then I can't vape it. At least we'll be safe. No? Didn't get hot that time. Okay, well it seems to be okay for now. It's not getting warm. So let me try to have a toot here. I wonder if I had it just cranked down too far? I couldn't couldn't even tell you what's going on inside of that switch. It did get real warm on me there for a second. Now it does not seem to be doing it at all. I think I had this cranked down too far. It was too snug in there. I had this cranked all the way down and you don't really need to do that. You just need to make sure that your battery isn't rattling around in there. Not that anybody is going to be using a Smoke Tech Magneto mod in 2018. In fact, I would venture, I would venture a guess to say that I could be the only person in the United States at this exact moment using a Smoke Tech Magneto mod. But let's see how it goes. Hey, it vapes. It's the weakest hitting mod that I think uh, that I think I've ever come across. Maybe with some real new clean contacts on there, it might hit a little bit better. I truly and honestly don't think I ever did a full review for the Smoke Tech Magneto mechanical mod. Oh, I did. I did review the Smoke Tech Magneto. There we go. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Grim Green from GrimGreen.com. Back here today, and yes, in case you're wondering, I am wearing pants. First up on the chopping block, available most everywhere, this this is the Smoke Tech Magneto. And the performance has been uh, been top notch. Really enjoyed using it. So the Magneto is a mechanical mod. When I first got the Magneto. I believed it to be an original creation. But as I looked into it more and I was told that the Magneto is actually a clone of, not an exact clone, but it's designed to look like, I'm gonna burp and it's just gonna happen. <clears throat> Pardon me, what is in the news, Robin? It's designed to look like the Enzonic. Oh, that's right. This was a clone. This was designed to look like the Enzonic mech mod. Ooh, let's see how close they actually really are. Oh yeah, it does. Wow, it looks exactly like the Enzonic mech mod. Maybe not exactly, but damn, it's damn, damn close. Wow, damn, damn close. And I remember the Enzonic, and I really wanted an Enzonic, but I never got an Enzonic. I did have a Smoke Tech Magneto. In fact, I still might have my original Smoke Tech Magneto somewhere. It's got to be somewhere in some box, somewhere in the closet. All right, let's give this one more try before we wrap it up.
Hey, look at that. Still kind of vapes. Um, obviously, in today's day and age, in 2018, with the advances that have been made in, in vapor products and, and especially safety features in mod and even newer mech mods are much safer than old mech mods used to be, I wouldn't recommend this. I wouldn't recommend checking it out. There's some retro vapings I do. You know, like last week when Liam was here and we're like, 510 cartomizers. Dude, if you want to go out there and try some old retro vapey stuff, go try a 510 cartomizer. It will... It will change your view of vaping and you know how we used to have to do it this one i would not recommend it please do not go try to track down a smoke tech magneto mod anywhere just just don't even bother don't try to find it don't try to buy it don't try to use it it's a relic and it's a relic for a reason and that was a text message from eric the smoke tech magneto did you hear the way rip tripper said that smoke tech magneto that's right in 2013, we were calling it Smoke. That's because it's pronounced Smoke. I'm just giving you a hard time. It's no big deal. All right, well, thank you, Case K, for the art and for the retro vaping. And thank you, Eric, Final and Vapor, for texting me. I'm sorry. I normally, I know you're probably saying, Nick, why don't you just turn off your ringer? Here's the thing. I can't turn off my ringer because lots of people call me and lots of people text me and there's some that I just need to reply to right away, especially if it's like DHL. If DHL, if my driver Romeo says, hey, I'm downstairs and I got two packages for you, he texts me, I need to go run down there. I need to take care of business and I need to get those packages. So I can't just leave my phone on silent. I'm one of those annoying people that has loud notifications on my phone. But anyway, there you go, smoke magneto. So what we're gonna do right now is move past this retro vaping and we are going to jump straight into some viewer mails. All right, well, we got the first viewer mail here from Justin. Justin's written in a few times, actually. Justin Bacon, he wrote in and said, hey, Nick, you've answered my questions before and even used my shout out in the vlog. Okay, well, this is it. This is your last one here, Justin Bacon. You've been getting real lucky sneaking in here. I've already answered your questions and you've been in a shout out in the vlog. That's fine, I don't really care. Um, I've watched all your videos and listened to the Culture Clouds podcast regularly. However, to my knowledge, this particular question, I don't think is one that's been asked last answered. I know you've said, okay, so the reason that I picked this one is because I want to show off his tattoo. Um, but he asks, I know you said Batman is your favorite superhero. However, uh, that was during a Marvel DC discussion between you and Ruby. So I wanted to know if he is your favorite overall superhero or just DC versus Marvel. Batman is my favorite DC hero. However, my favorite overall hero is Spawn. I've collected all of his comics since I was a kid and even have a half sleeve on each arm dedicated to him pictures attached. Thanks for taking the time to read my email. You also have full permission to use this email and all of its contents in your videos. Um, yes, so Batman is my favorite superhero overall. I love, love Batman. I don't know, I don't wanna sit here and just go on and on and on about how much I love Batman, but yes, overall, Marvel or DC, Batman is definitely my favorite superhero. I don't love what they're doing in the DC, you know, universe, cinematic universe. Um, I kinda like the Flash, but I don't love Henry Cavill as Superman. I don't love uh, Cyborg. I don't love the Green Arrow guy on TV. I do love Batfleck, but I want Batfleck to get his own damn Batfleck movie. And yeah, he did. He absolutely sent along pictures of his tattoos on his forearms. He has uh, duels. In fact, one of them looks real fresh when you took this picture. It looks real fresh, but he's got some dope ass spawn tattoos on his forearms. Here's the thing, Justin Bacon. I never really got into spawn. My buddy Jim got very into all of the image comic books. He would read Savage Dragon, he would read Gen 13, he would read Spawn, he read all of those. I liked Spawn fine, but I never really, really got into the comic books. I never really read through the books. I saw the Spawn movie, unfortunately. I am a big fan of Todd McFarlane. I think he's a, I think he's a great, great comic book writer and uh, I really like the Todd McFarlane toys. I used to own some Spawn figures that came out and uh, I really liked them but not a, not a not an overall not a huge fan of Spawn not as much obviously as I am a fan of uh, 
a fan of Batman. Of course, I, I'm assuming Justin Bacon that I'm substantially older than you. Spawn didn't come out for me until I was well into high school. And when, you know, I was well into high school and I was going through one of those phases where it's like, uh, maybe I was feeling a little bit too cool for comic books. You know, every once in a while in your life, you go through those phases where it's like, uh, maybe, maybe right now, you know, I'm a dumb kid. Maybe I'm too cool for comic books. But in reality, nobody is too cool for comic books. But thanks for writing in, Justin Bacon. Got another viewer mail here from Charlie. Let's listen to what Charlie has to say. He says, hey, Nick, we met you at VaporCon West a few years ago. I just wanted to tell you that we have had a very similar experience with Straight Outta Compton, especially my girlfriend. Yeah, loved it. Love Straight Outta Compton so much. It changed my mind. It changed my whole worldview, that movie did. When you want to do some research on something else passionate, check out Little Boozy's story. He's a rapper from Louisiana, which is mostly very conservative. He is known as a hoodlum. He was arrested and facing a murder charge, sitting on death row in Angola Penitentiary. He claimed innocence and said the prosecutor was out to get him, and everyone was like, yeah, right. I love that you threw that in an email. Turns out a young lawyer took his case for a price, of course. It went to trial and was one of the most bullshit trials with evidence that could only be called outrageous, and Little Boozy was found not guilty and became one of the few men to ever walk out of Angola death row a free man. It was later proven that the whole thing was set up by the DA due to a personal vendetta. What the fuck? Fuck, that's messed up. Um, and he gave me some links to where I can check out Lil Boozy. Absolutely, that's awesome. That That's really fucking cool, Charlie. Uh, thank you for sharing that with me. I, I do wanna look into Lil Boozy. I like people that do things, whether it's uh, music or metal or rap or, or whatever you do, if you make movies, if you draw, just people that do it with passion. I really admire that. So definitely, Charlie, I'm absolutely gonna check out Lil Boozy, bro. Drew writes in and says, Hi, Nick, I'm in Perth, Australia, and we have some really strict laws about vaping, even harsher than the smoking laws. We can't buy mods or juice containing nicotine. You can still buy cigarettes at the same place we buy food, though. However, there is a big guy by the name of Dave who is a vape shop, who has a vape shop, and he is a bloody champion. So helpful and knowledgeable. It's called Dipped. No, it's not called Dipped. That's a, that's a ridiculous name for a vape shop. It's called Dripped, and he sells all the basics like cotton tools, coils, tanks, and RDAs, and also nicotine-free juice. If you could, it would be great if you could send a shout out in the vlog. I'm sure you have some fans down under that would even believe a brick and mortar would be possible here in our beautiful, sunny, run by dickheads country. Thanks for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Giving a shout out to Dave who runs the shop Dripped in Perth, Australia. Just flying in the face of the regulations. Yeah, that's fantastic. If you're a vapor and you're in Perth, Australia, be sure to be sure to go support Dripped. Apparently there are not a lot or uh, if any vape shops in Perth, Australia, they have some very, very, very strict laws about vaping, which is ironic because they're so close to New Zealand and New Zealand has just completely embraced vaping, much in the same way that Canada has, much in the same way that the UK has. I'm really hoping that our brothers in the North, America's top hat, I'm hoping that some of that just kind of drips down, just kind of trickles down into America, and maybe we can start embracing vaping as a form of tobacco harm reduction as well. But awesome, yeah. Drew, you are shouted out. Dave, you are shouted out. Dripped in Perth, Australia is absolutely shouted out, Dave. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for writing in. I got another email here from Zachary. Zachary writes in, oh, Zach's a, uh, Zach's a cool kids club member. Yo, yo, Nick, I just wanted to thank you for all that you do. You know me as ZS Benedict on the live stream, and I would like to do a shout out for my mom, Jen. She is very supportive of me, and I can't thank her enough. I'm also heavily onto that Marcellus train. Anyway, have a good day, and you are more than welcome to use my name, Zach, and my mom's name in a future vlog. Hashtag keep on vaping, hashtag cool kids club absolutely zach you get a shout out your mom jen you did say her name i thought that her name wasn't in there jen zach boom you're shouted out bump that fist you see it bump it also jen if for some reason you're watching this vlog with your son zach then jen you you get to bump the screen as well and i'm glad you're on that marcellus train marcellus is just it, it's just a good 
juice. It's from Savage E-Liquids. It's called Marcellus. It's it's amazing. It's an amazing juice. And then because I mentioned Savage E-Liquid, I do have to say in the interest of, you know, open and honest communication, uh, Savage E-Liquid is a sponsor of the podcast. They pay us money to advertise on the podcast and they also sent us over some juices to try and Marcellus is one of the juices that they sent over that I just have absolutely fallen in love with. Anyway, Zach, thank you so much for writing in. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing great. I got time for a couple more. Edward. Oh, pictures of dog. I get dog pictures. So Edward sent pictures of his dog in. He said, in your vlog, you said, I will never be upset if you send me pictures of your dog. I'm here to provide pupper pictures. That's literally it. Thanks. And Edward, the only problem is you didn't tell me the name of your dog, but look at this pupper. <gasps> Look at this little pupper. Look at that pupper. That is an adorable picture. And then there's a picture of, of Ed and his, and his little pupper dog. That's an amazing little pupper dog that I don't even know. I, I don't know the name of your dog, Edward, but I already love your dog. What a fantastic viewer mail. Fantastic, Edward. Thank you for pictures of your dog. I would like to know his name, though. S send me an email back and let me know your dog's name so I can put a name to the faces. All right, we got uh, one last uh, viewer mail here, and this is gonna deal with a little bit of advocacy in Costa Rica, but Jeffrey wrote in. He said, hi, Nick. First of all, great show. Huge fan of yours for years. Uh, what you do and how active you are in the community. Well, thank you. It, I mean, it's absolutely Absolutely, my pleasure. My name is Jeffrey, and besides having an e-juice company, more importantly, I am a member of a pro vaping association here in Costa Rica. AS Vape CR. To be honest, it's quite new in its formation. However, we do have established close collaboration and relationship with ASO Vape from Colombia. We have been meeting with them in Vape South America Expo at the end of this month and Pro Vapio in Mexico because we are trying to form a Latin American front to defend and promote vaping. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Man, more people need to do that. Good on you, Jeffrey. We cannot take full credit for this idea because it was at the suggestion of Dr. Ricardo Peloza uh, one time when we spoke with him. And yes, Peloza, Ricardo Peloza, he is a scientist. He's a scientist or a doctor of some sort. Obviously, his name is Dr. Ricardo Peloza, so he is a doctor, but he was quoted in... I can't remember which article it was. Anyway, he had a very pro-science, pro-vaping, uh, you know, uh, stance. And so he suggested it that they should start a Latin America front to defend and promote vaping. I think that's a fantastic idea. He goes on to say, here in Costa Rica, we know you are a huge influencer as well. And I don't know if it is too much to ask or it would be abusing your activism, but I think that maybe you can grant us just a minute of yourself to record a really short video directed to Costa Rica telling the public how important it is to be together to prevent any attacks from the government or any entity. We can get more people interested in defending our right to choose a healthier lifestyle. If it's any help, I can bribe you with something, maybe sending a couple of beers from Costa Rica. No, you definitely don't Don't have to go to all the trouble to send me beers from Costa Rica. Thanks a lot for your time, Nick, and thanks for what you've done for the community. If we vape alone, we can save our life, but if we do it together, we can save a billion. Smart. That is just fantastic. Fantastic. And yes, I'm just going to throw this into the vlog right now. Let's just do this right now, Jeffrey. Anybody in Costa Rica, it is crucial. It is crucial. It is crucial to be a unified front. There's a lot of big personalities in the vape industry. There's a lot of big personalities just in the regular world. And so you may not like the guy next to you, but you damn sure have to defend his right to vape as well. It's much easier to get in front of horrible legislation than to have horrible legislation pass and try to get it repealed or changed. So if you're in Costa Rica, you got to check out Asvape CR. I will try to find a link. I will try to put it down in the description, but here you go. Shout out, uh, fight the man all that good stuff for all the vapors in Costa Rica. Uh, get involved, you don't have to do something. Wait, how does it go? You don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. Get involved. And, and Kevin Skipper, I'm stealing that directly from you. I, I took your catchphrase and I'm stealing it. It's now my catchphrase. Sorry, not sorry. Well, cool, all right. I think that's gonna do it for viewer mail right now. I just don't want, you know, I don't. the vlog is getting to be long. It's getting to be long and it's just getting to be real, real long. And it's taken me a long time now to sort of like 
put this whole vlog together, like get all the segments and do all the things and do all of this and then shoot it and set it up and, and do things and have lighting and do all this and edit it. It's just, it's just a huge process. And I don't know if anybody has sat in front of their computer and edited a full two hours of video every single week, but it's a lot, it's a lot of editing. So with that said, we're gonna wrap up some viewer mail and what we're gonna do right now, I got a juice, I'm excited to try it. Very random juice tasting. So I believe it was last week that I got that box of uh, acai juices. They say it was SoCal Vape Co. I think it was SoCal Vape. SoCal Vape sent over the acai flavors. Someone else had sent me the acai and then we tried that acai juice and it was that acai granola bar, remember? And I wasn't like really super pumped on it. So they sent me just the granola bar base, which I haven't tried yet. I'm gonna try it very soon. I just haven't tried it yet, but I wanted to try another one of their flavors. I wanted to give acai another shot. They also sent over that like, it's called a uh, chop, shop the chop shop bakery stuff that was like the blueberry pie and the strawberry pie and the caramel tart something like that what i wanted to try today was this one and this is acai tropical and i want it to be summer so badly but it's just seriously so much like may gray june gloom in los angeles every day i wake up and it's just overcast and rainy every single day and i really really like that weather just not every day in la i want it to be summer. I'm looking forward to, to warm weather and beaches and summertime in Southern California. There's not much better in the world than summertime in Southern California. So this is the Acai Tropical in the new Chubby Gorilla bottles, which don't leak as much. Tasting real tropical. Uh, all I taste right up front is like uh, mango and pineapple. That's what I taste, mango and pineapple. I don't know what is in these. Let me try to track these down. Oh, here we go. SoCalVape.com. This is the tropical acai smoothie with honey. Here's what it says. The refreshing pineapple and juicy tropical fruit flavors in this tasty juice are sure to tease your taste buds. Lava flow, Maui sunset, Miami beach, Miami beach, iced tea, mango colada, sunset beach, eye of the hurricane, Havana beach, each swizzle stick inhale conjures up warm tropical breezes and sand under your toes. Every breezy exhale is like a vacation. That's a, that's a lofty statement from a juice. So uh, let me just uh, throw some of this on these coils. I'm tasting it on the Inakin Proton Mod with an original recipe recoil on top that has been freshly wicked with some cotton bacon or a cotton bacon prime rather which honestly it's my favorite cotton bacon so far in fact i think it's the only cotton bacon that i've actually genuinely enjoyed using ah there's the vapors all right tropical acai smoothie with honey cheers here's to you guys Okay, so I'm just gonna do that thing that I always do in every juice tasting. I'm gonna sit back, I'm gonna vape this juice for a little bit, and then we're gonna come back and talk about it. Cue the music. Okay, well now that it's properly foggy in here, let me say this. God, I love this juice. I really love this juice. From the first toot I took, I, I knew that I was gonna like this juice. All I was doing back there was just enjoying it. Just enjoying it and savoring it. I get no weird off flavors from this like I did with that other acai granola. I've decided I just don't like acai. I don't like the flavor of acai berries. Thankfully, I don't really taste any acai in here. And I know it's called tropical acai smoothie with honey, but here's what I get out of this juice. I get a lot of mango, I get a lot of pineapple, and I actually get a little bit of papaya. Traditionally in the past, papaya flavors or any, any e-liquid that has had papaya in it, I haven't been a real big fan of. That flavor in me, we don't really get along so well. It's always had this kind of like weird off like borderline like BO 
type of flavor to it. I get no such weirdness from the papaya in this. Like I said, mango, pineapple, papaya. I taste some honey happening in there. It very much feels like this could be a, a frozen tropical alcoholic smoothie beverage, you know, sitting on the beach. This is an intensely, intensely summer, summer, summertime vape. And I promise that I wasn't making a Will Smith reference right there, but what's funny is back in the day, I memorized that whole song because I loved that song so much. Oh, it's, it's a rich tapestry of old stories from Grim Green. But yeah, I'm digging this. I'm really digging this juice. I like it way more than I thought it would. I mean, and honestly, and this isn't a dig at you guys at Asai or SoCal Vape or anything like that. The Asai granola did not win me over in, in any capacity. If that was the only juice I had tried from you guys, I would have been like, mm, I'm okay, I'm all set. I don't need any more from you guys, thanks. But now that I've been, you know, forced to try it, this Asai tropical smoothie with honey, I'm really glad I did because this is worlds, worlds better than that other liquid that I had. It's something that I actually desire to vape. I want to keep this around. I kind of want to just vape through this whole bottle right now. This Acai Tropical is legit. All right, well, there you go. Acai Tropical. It's technically Tropical Acai Smoothie with Honey, and this can be found on uh, SoCalVape.com. And of course, thanks to YouTube, I can't link to any outside vendors in the description of this video, so you'll have to use your Google Foo, or the links will also be over on GrimGreen.com under this blog posting. Vlog, blog, vlog, blog posting. Wow, that's ridiculous. Anyway, yeah, it's good. It's good. Let me, I'm just gonna, let me just have a little bit more here. Okay, I'm not gonna do a whole other music montage, but I like it. I really like it. Thank you, Asai. Thank you, SoCal, for sending that over. I'm really interested to get into those chop shop juices. I think maybe next week we'll dig into that blueberry pie because that one just smelled fucking delicious. But anyway, yeah, that's what I got. Well, we're winding down. We're coming down to the end of the vlog here. It's time for the last segment of the week. This is Favorite Comments. Right, so uh, <clears throat> first comment of the week comes to us from uh, Tonya. Tonya? I said your name was Tonya, and that's completely not right. I believe it is Tonya. Anyway, she left a comment and said, Crazy, my doctor, who is a pulmonary specialist, told me that my COPD diagnosis from four years ago must have been a mistake. Because after I quit smoking and started vaping, my symptoms disappeared and my lungs are healthy again. My doctor actually said vaping is a significant way to reduce harm to your respiratory system and over all health when compared to smoking hashtag the more you know yeah absolutely i mean that's not uh you know uh, science that's not data or anything that's just an anecdotal story that yeah the vaping worked for her thank you thank you so much for sharing that in the comments uh, this one makes l literally zero sense to me uh henry has potential left a comment and said all caps can we have apple juice tasting please we all know wag gun so just have some cool juice to refresh your palate dude i what I, uh, I literally have no idea what that means. You want to do an apple juice tasting? Shit, sure, let's do an apple juice tasting, sir. And this one from Andrew was also uh, very confusing to me. It says, uh... I'm the first who's watching the YOLO a lame Rupiful. And I and I think those are, you know, YOLO is you only live once, right? What's A-Y-L-M-A-O? Laugh my ass off? Are you laughing my ass off? And then R-P-F-L? A little help? Does anybody know what R-P-F-L means? I'm an old dude now and I don't keep up with what the hip kids are saying. What the fuck is R-P-F-L? Anyway, I got another favorite comment of the week here from Fodster. Foster left a comment and said, You are late, Sir Grimm. I got home from work to no immediate vlog. I didn't know what to do with myself, so I spoke to my wife. Now, thanks to you, I have to sand and repaint the banisters on the stairs this weekend. Thanks, Nick. Really. Thanks. Bummer. 
bummer, dude. All my fault because I didn't have a vlog. So you decided instead of so there was no vlog, so you decided to talk to your wife instead. Uh, I don't know if I'm taking full responsibility because I feel like even after the vlog, you would have eventually you know, talked to your wife at some point. So I feel like the painting, sanding and painting of the banisters on the stairs this weekend was going to be a job for you, regardless of if I had a vlog up or not. But I'm sorry that I couldn't delay it any uh, any farther for you. My last favorite comment of the week wasn't even a comment. It was just an email I got from someone named Kenzie. And uh, they just wrote me an email and said, you have wide nostrils. I know. <laughs> I know I have wide nostrils. A lot of people have wide nostrils. There are dozens of us. In fact, a uh, quick story. Back when I was working at Starbucks, I used to work with this girl named Amy, and Amy Strathman was awesome. She was she was just so cool. She was just a fantastic person to work with, um, and she would always always comment about my nostrils. She would come back into the back room when I'm like, you know, counting money and putting money in the safe and stuff like that, and she would grab a quarter and she'd be like, "Can I just?" put this quarter in your nose. No, Amy, you can't put the quarter in my nose. Nobody can put quarters in my noses. I don't want any quarters in my nose. I have a phobia of change. Not change, but like coins. I have a phobia of coins. I know it's weird and irrational, but I do. I have a phobia of coins. They're just God, they're so dirty. But anyway, yeah, comments of the week. Good stuff. Huge shout out to uh, to Nico once again from Finland for helping me helping me wrangle up some favorite comments of the week. Always very, very much appreciated, brother. Um, we're done. I think we're done. We're done with this vlog. Uh, let me take a quick look around the room and make sure I didn't forget anything. Uh, no, we're good. We're all good. This is going to get saved until next week for the retro vaping, but I think we're all good to go. And now I'm so torn. I don't know whether I want to vape my new, you know, Lazy Vapors Box Mod Squonker, beautiful Squonker, or if I want to keep rocking on this here, uh, Acai Tropical Train. I think I'm going to stick to the Acai Tropical Train just for a little bit, just for, just for a while. I just really like this flavor. All right, anyway, yes, we are all good. I have everything, and I know I say this every week, but everybody that makes it to the end of the vlog, you're just my favorite damn people on earth, and if I ever get the opportunity to meet you in real life, I do owe you a hug, or I also dispense crisp high fives. The choice is yours. Yes, and it's the choice of a new generation. Ah, uh, no idea where that Wayne's World quote came from. Anyway, we're done. We're done here. Thank you so much for joining me again. Uh, I, I, I don't remember how to end vlogs. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Please remember, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. Get involved, and let's keep on vaping.